Well, welcome everybody to Quality Cafe. My name is Robin Spee, and I'm leader of innovation and engagement at the Quality Council. And I'm here with Kevin Smith, who is our digital media and communication specialist. Um, so this is a special edition of Quality Cafe at the request of the Change Day BC ambassadors who wanted to learn more about using Twitter to help promote Change Day. Um, for those of you that don't know, Change Day is a pledge-based campaign that's currently underway. And it's based on the premise that small acts of change can add up to big impacts for our health system. So we have kind of a, a few months with the campaign open and people can share their pledges online at Change Day BCA, and then and we're building up to a Provincial Day of Action on October 15th. This session is really for you, and uh, we hope that you'll make it interactive, and don't be afraid to ask questions. So you can do that through the chat like you already have with entering your handles, or you can raise your hand using the WebEx hand icon, um, or just speak up whenever you want throughout the presentation, and Kevin will do his best to answer your questions as we go. There will also be some time for questions at the end, though. So I with that, I'll hand it over to you, Kevin, and uh, you can tell us all about Twitter. Hey, thanks for coming. Um, just to recap, in case you've just joined us, um, I'm Kevin Smith, and I am the human being behind the Twitter account for the BC Patient Safety and Quality Council, as well as our um, account for the Quality Forum, which is BC Quality Forum. I help out with Change Day's Twitter account, and I also have my own at Kevin for Quality that I pop into whenever I have time. Um, and thanks for typing your Twitter handles into the chat box. Some of them are fun. I like yours, Allison McLeod at Cloud McLeod. Um, but don't worry, always change your, your handle if you end up not liking it maybe after this session. Um, so we're going to go through uh, a little bit of the basics of Twitter today. And Twitter is a bit tough because it's got its own jargon and language in a way. And I'll explain a lot of the terms. Uh, throughout this presentation, and I'll try not to use them before I explain them, but sometimes it's just completely unavoidable, and I'm sorry, I'll do the best I can, but it's, it's tough. It's, like I said, it's got its own language that we'll talk about. For instance, um, a lot of you have been tweeting with this Quality Cafe hashtag, and, and we'll get to about what hashtags are in, in, in a sec, um, but keep doing it. Uh, we can keep the conversation going on Twitter right now. And after the, the webinar, uh, you type this little pound sign and then Quality Cafe. It's an excellent way for all of us to find each other's tweets about today's session. So an hour, and it's like 54 minutes now. So we're going to go over the basics of Twitter, and, and, and we'll do the best I can to, to get to everything. Um, and, but I'm all around afterwards in case you have questions on Twitter, email. Uh, you can call me up on the phone even, and I'm going to help you get going on Twitter and start spreading Change to ABC and using it as a learning tool and to engage your networks and colleagues. So um, we'll do as we can. It's going to be fast-paced, but feel free to pop in your questions, and we'll try and get to them all. Um, check uh, the BC Patient Safety and Quality Council has published a, a Twitter guide for healthcare professionals. Um, people seem to like it and find it useful. so. Um, if you go to the website and just search for Twitter in the search bar, it'll pop up. And I also just tweeted a link to it if you check out my at Kevin for Quality Twitter account. And we'll uh, provide a bit more information than we'll cover today. Um, we'll do a quick little poll in the chat box again. Um, so what experience do you have with Twitter? I'd like to find out where we are at with everybody today. Do you think, are you, are you going, what's Twitter? And you don't know anything? You know a little bit about Twitter? Uh, so a little bit of, of your way on Twitter, do you use it all the time? Or are you like me and, and you can't type sentences that are longer than 40, 140 characters now? For instance, to, um, Twitter lets you tweet with a maximum of 140 characters. So um, this is you to be very neat in your typing. Very little and a little bit. This session will be perfect for you. I didn't want a bunch of all stars because this would be a little bit too basic for them. Excellent. So I'm on the right track so far. You're in the right place, and hopefully, at the end of it, you'll feel confident enough to uh, start making your way towards using it frequently and uh, no longer being able to type very long sentences. Um, so use Twitter. 
um, at the council. Well, if you're familiar with kind of the concepts of large-scale change, um, it really helps us engage a lot of people um, and people who we have both strong and weak tie relationships with. So that means people that we know well and some people that we don't know very well, maybe even at all, but they help us um, achieve our goals, spread campaigns, um, uh, create some large-scale change in, in health care. Uh, it helps us spread calls to action to large audiences, so kind of like Change to APC. It helps increase awareness of issues, so maybe there's some new guidelines or something that we want to spread. Uh, it helps us build and strengthen communities. So I think we're developing a little quality improvement community on Twitter right now, um, which is fun. It's just a nice way to connect with people that way. Um, we use Twitter a lot at the Quality Forum. If you've ever been there, you can probably remember how much we promote it. It's just great to connect with fellow participants at the event, but also with people who aren't at the event, too, who are able to attend. It's great to just find out about other people and what they're doing and what resources organizations are publishing, um, what information they're sending out. It's just a fantastic way of connecting with people and places that you probably otherwise never would have connected with. And what the conversations are already taking place on Twitter, whether it be around specific uh, clinical areas like sepsis or patient communities or people who have a common interest in, in um, communications or social media, um, conversations are already taking place. So it's a great time for you to hop in and join them. So just in case you don't know, so Twitter is a social network. It's um, arrow, and tweets are to 140 characters, which is tough but beneficial. Um, because it helps people get to the point. It's growing uh, very fast, still almost 300 million, million users at the end of last year. Really, it's kind of an essential communications tool for organizations and companies and campaigns, and it's becoming increasingly popular, I think, at the personal level. Uh, people are, are starting to discover it for professional development purposes and just to uh, connect with people. Um, so this term we'll go over is handle. So uh, when you register your Twitter account, you have to pick a handle. Uh, it's just basically another word for username, and it is Kevin for quality. And another one is BCPSQC for the Pain Safety and Quality Council. Um, you get one that reflects who you are. It's an opportunity to um, show your personality a little bit. Um, like Allison's before, Cloud McCloud, that was kind of funny. It made me smile. Um, you want to keep it memorable so people um, can type it in if they hear you mention it or, or something. They'll remember what it was and how to spell it. So um, you want to keep it a little bit simple, keep it pretty. That just means um, don't throw in a bunch of underscores and numbers because um, they'll, they'll just kind of take up space and not look that great. And you want it a bit short. And we'll to that, uh, the reason why in a bit, but um, you kind of keep it to about no more than 10 or 12 or 15 characters. So you don't want to take up too much space. Um, so here's an example. So a bad one might be Kevin Hart's quality improvement. He's got like three underscores, and I've changed some letters to numbers. Um, that's pretty long, and I'd have to explain to people that there are numbers instead of letters, and there's underscores. Just not that pretty, right? Um, so one might be Kevin for quality. It's simple. It's to the point. Um, it describes me a little bit and what I'm what doing on Twitter. And um, ultimately, if people want to find out more about me because they're intrigued by Kevin Quality, um, they can click my name and they'll be helped by my descriptive Twitter bio. They're also unlimited to 140 characters. Um, so again, you're committed there. but So you want to keep them a little bit informational and, and tell people about yourself. It's a chance to show your personality, which um, I'll probably repeat a few times today. Um, I think it's okay to have a bit of fun with Twitter and, and just, um, again, your personality. If you're a fun person, have a little bit of fun with it. Um, I try not to take life too seriously, so I've got a picture of myself holding an ice cream cone. Um, my colleagues love it. Um, I always hear about how great that picture is. I'm just kidding because they're giving me a hard time about it lately. Um, and disclaimers are common. So um, a lot of the time you'll see uh, people uh, um, opinions are mine and do not reflect those of my organization. So you know, along those lines, you might want to check to see if your employer has uh, a policy or a guidelines that um, kind of lets you know if you, you should include something like that. And it also gives you a chance to um, link to LinkedIn bio or your website. Um, 
maybe a staff page on your employer's website uh, where people can go and learn a little bit about you. That is very important in your Twitter handle. So um, it's used to identify accounts. So in a tweet, when you run somebody's um, Twitter handle, um, people can click it and learn a bit more about that person and follow that person. And so it just turns uh, their name from a plain name into a link that they can click. Now, it's important to note that uh, just like if you were to get um, somebody's email address wrong, uh, and they would never receive an email that you send to them. Well, if you misspell their handle or forget the little at symbol, um, that person won't find out that you tweeted about him or her. So uh, whenever you're mentioned on Twitter, whenever somebody um, includes your Twitter handle in a tweet, you'll get an email notification um, unless you turn it off. And it's just a nice way to find out that, hey, this person tweeted about you. Um, check out what people are saying and why they did so. Um, and all, um, People won't click it and find out more about that person and follow him or her. So um, it just makes it a little bit functional. So here's an example. I told you, Cynthia, that I was going to pick on you. Um, I need someone to pick on because it makes it fun. I'm going to pretend that you're a Calgary Flames fan. I'm not sure if you are. Um, you can let me know in the chat box if you are. I'm sorry if you're not, but uh, I want to pick on you a little bit. So if, I want, if Cynthia was a Calgary Flames fan and uh, Canucks had just um, beat them in the plus, like I'm sure they're going to. Um, I might want to say, hey, Cynthia, how about those flames? Um, now, that's bad because she wouldn't find out that I tweeted over. She wouldn't be told via email. And um, don't boo me, Kathy. I'm just using it as an example. Um, so she would never find out that I was making fun of her. Uh, this is also bad because I don't have the at symbol here. So, hey, Cynthia Turner, how about those flames? It's good but it's not great because she won't find out that I'm making fun of her, which is kind of the point. So it's a good example. Hi, at Cynthia Turner 07, how about those flames? She would be told, and people click her um, Twitter and go follow her too. Um, but here's another little tip about that. So if I were to start my tweet with her handle, only people that follow both me and Cynthia have that tweet um, to their timelines when they log into Twitter. Um, it's not ideal because um, there might be that many people who follow both of us. A good way to that is just to add a word before it. So hi, at Cynthia Turner. Oh, you can see, see I made a little mistake there. I put a space so she wouldn't actually find out. Um, or you can add like a, just a little period or a quotation mark. As long as something there to break up um, the star tweet and the at symbol, um, it'll up in feeds of everybody who follows you. Um, so the next thing we'll cover is retweets. Now retweets are like forwarding an email. Um, it's very common in Twitter. You've probably seen it um, very frequently. Um, if you've checked Twitter and logged in, um, a very high percentage of all the tweets sent are retweets. Um, so here's an example. Uh, me tweeting, hey, Quality Cafe friends, check out uh, the Council's Twitter guide for healthcare professionals. Well, uh, Cynthia must have liked my, this isn't really uh, fictional, by the way, Cynthia must have liked my tweet because she retweeted and she added Kevin Rules. So thanks, Cynthia. I'm glad you still liked me after I made a view for the flames. Um, but this is an example. So you can see my original tweet starts here. Um, this is a little RT that Twitter will add automatically. to write a little bit of a message there. So um, that is, that's retweeting. Um, it's a, uh, you often also have an option where it says um, quote retweet, um, which is, allows you to write a little bit at the end of your retweet as well. Um, so the wording can vary a little bit depending on the app or the website that you're using. Um, and, uh, so um, see how it's going. Twitter is a bit experiential based where you kind of have to feel your way around it too, but this is the most common way that I've seen retweet handled and Sid says Canucks all the way and I agree with you and thank you for being a good sport. Um, I tweet then. It's like a retweet um, but maybe edited the content a little bit. Maybe the tweet was very long and and when you went to tweet it, it ended up over 140 characters, so you needed to shorten it a little bit. Uh, that's 
that's when you would use a modified tweet. And what you do is um, we option to edit the text in the tweet. You can change the R to an M. Here's an example. Um, change ABC tweeted, check out this awesome pledge tree at Burnaby Hospital. Way to go, patient navigation team. And they mentioned um, Fraser Health's tweet. Has changed ABC hashtag. Um, well, I wanted to retweet that and have some fun with it, but it was a bit too long. So you can see I've shortened hospital and patient and navigation. Um, and to indicate that I've edited it in case I um, um, used a wrong abbreviation or may have changed the context. And I just want to indicate that it wasn't changed ABC's original tweet word for word, I just changed the RT to an M there. And I would add a fun little message like fist bump. So, next hat tip. This is a bit of an etiquette tip. Um, if you find something on Twitter and you want to tweet it about it yourself, but you don't necessarily want to retweet somebody's message, you just add a little hat tip with their Twitter handle and give them credit for being the original source of your information. It's just a nice thing to do. So here's an example. Uh, yesterday, or no, sorry, I saw Jen on Twitter yesterday and I checked out her timeline, JL underscore Danielson, and I found this tweet from her about a uh, learning opportunity for physicians. Um, and I wanted to send it to my followers too, so here's what I could do. Uh, just say, hey, physicians, here's a new online course about blood transfusion and a link to it. But I want to give Jen credit, so I just go hat tip and then her Twitter handle. So it's just a ticket thing. I'm giving her a shout out that I found the information from her. Uh, it's a nice thing to do. She'll be notified that you did it. So uh, it's a good way to kind of engage her and and she follow me as a result so she knows that I'm out there now. Um, and again, it's just a nice thing to do. Uh, I see a question from Kathy. She asks, what is the significance of the hers um, around fist bump? If I go back to the slides, you'll see them here. Um, Actually, not a Twitter thing, Kathy. That oh, that must go back a couple years, and it just kind of indicates uh, like an action. Um, so it goes around any kind of like verb action, just to indicate that I'm putting my fist out there and and fist bumping them. I'm saying, way to go. How do you copy the link to do an HT? Well, um, I'm able to copy and paste it from the tweet itself. Um, and you can use the same one, or you could click it in the original tweet and then um, grab it from the address bar of your internet. It's been a long time since we chatted. She asked, an RT is put in automatically by Twitter, but MT and HT are put in by users. That is exactly correct. Um, an RT will be put automatically when you um, press tweet, but if you edit the tweet, um, edit the text of the original tweet, you'll want to change the R to an M yourself. And you have to add the hat tip yourself because um, you're creating a new tweet from scratch usually. So you'll have to do that yourself. With hashtags. So you saw that with the quality cafe hashtag that I mentioned earlier, and a lot of you have been using it in your first few tweets. Um, so hashtags are basically a way to filter out specific conversations from all of the tweets sent in the world. Um, uh, just yeah, they're basically a little filter um, that can apply to just pick ones out. So you can see the common ones include like sepsis. Um, there's health there. This one is for BC healthcare. Um, there's a wide range of them in there, and you can usually if you're using an app or a, uh, another Twitter tool, you can create a list that's based only on this hashtag, so you can keep that filter around forever, basically. And just a nice way to organize um, tweets. So, for example, I follow almost uh, 4,000 people with the Option Safety and Quality Council account. Well, um, tweets would get lost if I were to only check out um, the Twitter that contains all the tweets from all 4,000 people. Instead, I can uh, search for specific hashtags that might be used, like who's tweeting about BC Healthcare or Canadian Health, and it just helps you stay organized. Uh, and again, it's just another way to have a little bit of fun sometimes, um, where you can add a hashtag that just um, you say, "Boo, grandma." Um, 
almost. That's a, a fun thing to say, like, yeah, I did it. Um, sent out my first tweet. It's not serious. There's probably not very many people using it, but you could say anything. You could say, yeah, I did it, or something like that. Just a way to say um, I'm myself on the back. Um, so here's an example. In saying, I need help finding stroke materials. Does anyone have ideas on where to go? Well, let's add the little pounce and turn it into a hashtag. Um, we can see what'll happen. If we were to click the hashtag in the tweet afterwards, or if you did so, this would pop up. So you can see these tweets are using their stroke hash. And it's all the tweets that are sent by everybody around the world and only including ones that include the stroke hashtag. Now you can also search for it um, in any app or twitter.com and you can just type hashtag into the search bar and you'll get the page that we're seeing now. And you can filter them by the top tweets. So that's, those are tweets that are maybe being clicked a lot or they're getting a lot of retweets by people. You always just mean any um, tweet that includes that stroke hashtag or you can even filter it by people you follow. So only the people that you find interesting on Twitter, only the people that you follow and uh, that are tweeting about the, um, the hashtag stroke. Message, that's our next term. Now, it's basically Twitter's version of a private message. So that's Cynthia. Um, if I say, hi, Cynthia, would you like to make a friendly wager on the game tonight? Best of luck to your flames. Um, that could be a public tweet where I just wanted to be light and, and nice, but if I want to uh, uh, have a little fun and say the loser buys poutine, the are going down, well, I might want to send that in a direct message. Um, and a lot of um, Twitter apps or Twitter um, um, kind of um, websites uh, that, are, that aren't Twitter.com but still help you use Twitter um, automated this for you. You so usually click a little symbol like an envelope or even something that says the um, letters DM and it'll kind of take care of this for you. It'll automate the process because it's a bit complicated. If you just type um, um, to CM, this is what you'd have to do. Type D and then a space and then no at symbol in the handle. So trying to find the automated way that your app or your website has created for you. If not, you can always type D underscore um, handle with no at symbol. Um, a lowercase d, Kathy, great question. And that's how you send a DM on Twitter. Now, it's implicated, isn't it? Um, there have been a few instances where people have meant to send direct messages and, and um, accidentally uh, messed up one of these few steps and made their private message um, so um, be careful that you're doing it properly. If it's really sensitive, uh, try to find that person's email address perhaps, or try to make your tweet not so sensitive. Um, and then you can explore some of the apps and websites that are out there and see how they've automated it and kind of take care of this specific sequence for you. Um, just to your questions, Lee, did you... I'll say that you can also do the at at the beginning. It will only go to that person. Right. So um, if I were to type um, at Kevin for quality, which I'm going to do at the chat box right now, and then this is my tweet, uh, only the people that follow and oh, let's say that Cynthia um, tweeted at Kevin for quality. This is my tweet. Only the people that follow both Cynthia and I would set. It would be push timelines, but it would be a completely public tweet. So that follow both of us would have it pushed to them, but anybody that goes to Cynthia's um, time of all the tweets that she sent would see it. So it's public. It's definitely not private. Um, NASA, I received a private message via True Twit. What is this? Um, that's a good question, Joanne. A lot of people have signed up for services like um, Twit and um, no matter what the service does, sometimes it'll send out an automatic direct message to, um, for example, everybody that follows that person or new followers. Uh, I think they're becoming a bit less frequent because they're kind of not well received. They're, all, they're kind of annoying. They're not that engaging. So I think fewer, fewer people are doing I kind of recommend not sending out automated DMs if you can. So 
Um, that's something to keep in mind. And um, BCPS, you want to ask, did you say you also need an underscore after D? No, it's just D space, and then the person still with no at symbol. And yet, the DMs are limited to 140 characters. I don't see any more questions. Uh, moving on to favorites. So favorites are just, um, it's a way of saving tweets that you want to see again. So maybe somebody tweeted out a resource that you want to access again, again in the future, uh, a website that you want to keep checking out. Well, you can just favorite it. It's also a nice way to say, I like this tweet. So it's it's just, it's a way that um, lets somebody know that you valued what he just tweeted. And it's important to note that they're public. So um, again, some um, some celebrities mainly have have gotten themselves into a bit of hot water because they have uh, favorited a tweet that um, wasn't uh, that um, maybe they didn't want people knowing that they liked it. So just to note that they're public. And here's the um, so a good example, though, just uh, these days it's a very popular way to just let someone know that this was a great tweet and um, well done. So you'll see people, sometimes they've favorited like thousands of tweets. That's usually what they're doing. Yes, Annie, it is the equivalent of liking on Facebook. Um, it's totally cool to favorite lots of tweets, and that was an excellent analogy that I'm going to try and remember for next year, so thank you. List. Again, um, I kind of mentioned lists a little bit when I was talking about um, hashtags. So they help you group people you are following by any topic you desire. Um, a lot of the time you can also create a list um, based on a hashtag, like sepsis or BCHC. Um, they could be public or private. Um, so you can, you can um, uh, adjust its settings so that only you can see the list. And you can also subscribe to public lists that other people create, um, which is a handy way to hop on uh, somebody else's work. Um, so are, they're a nice way to filter out specific people or specific topics if you follow a lot of people uh, or if you want to narrow it down. So for example, I've got lists where um, I've uh, I only uh, subscribe uh, staff members here at the Patient Safety and Quality Council so I can follow them. Uh, specifically, and I've also got lists um, based hashtags, like the BCHC one that I mentioned before. And here lists look like if you go to your Twitter account or anybody else's Twitter account, you can see um, the tweets and following and followers and favorites, uh, a list of the lists that they've created. Um, so this indicates that the Patient Safety Quality Council has created it for um, We've subscribed to some that other people have um, um, for us. In this case, it's Helen Bevan's list of global healthcare improvers. And what's interesting, you can also see Mem of. So if you, if I were to click that, I would see all the lists to which people have subscribed to Patient Safety and Quality Council. Fun way to find out um, other accounts that. Uh, you have something in common with. You've been grouped together with them for some reason. Um, it's, so it's a good way to find people to follow and, and check out how people are perceiving you out there in the Twitterverse. Um, let's see, we've got questions. Can the, the Patient Safety and Quality Council ask, are lists a good way to separate personal versus professional related content, for example? Um, yeah, it's a good way to do it. Um, you can use... Um, your list for whatever you want. Um, I would say that if your personal versus professional content is um, um, a bit too uh, um, um, different, then you might want to create a personal and a professional account. Certainly, if you're going to be um, maybe tweeting about specific content that um, may not um, dive that well with your professional world, you might want to create a separate account, but I'll put an asterisk beside there um, just because you create a separate account so that you can tweet um, information that might not jump with your professional world. It doesn't, it's not a to protect you from scrutiny or anything. It's still there um, with your name on it, so it's not a, 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 it can't protect you from everything. Um, and we've got comments coming in about how people are using um, lists and how they're helpful. Um, 
Uh, you can't use I only show tweets following the followers. How do I get the favorites and labels to show? Uh, that's for me to say right now, Kathy, but maybe um, you haven't favorited any tweets yet, so they might not be showing up. Uh, same with lists. Um, and because I, I don't see an option to create the handle under create your profile, how to change this. Um, maybe they're not saying create your, uh, ch oh, change the handle. Um, it's, it's in there somewhere, um, Jacqueline. I can't say exactly for sure, but I know I've helped someone do it. Um, step by step. So maybe I'm going to make a note to uh, um, look when the session's done, and I'll tweet it out. So make sure you follow me at Kevin for Quality, and um, I'll send you um, specific information about how to change your um, Twitter handle. Um, and here are some common images. So if you download an Kevin, app, Kevin, yeah. Trev, just before we proceed, I think we missed two questions in the chat. Uh, one yeah. was from Michelle Preston. I find that people sometimes add me to their lists. Is that a good thing? Uh, I'm going to assume yes, it's a good thing. It means um, um, they're, they're they're to filter out your tweets for some reason. So based on who you are, the subject you're tweeting about. Um, but I'm going to say yes, it's a good thing. You can always go and check out the specific lists um, that you're being added to um, and find out for sure if it's a good thing. I'm going to assume that it's not a list of you know people I don't like on Twitter. Um, because that wouldn't be practical. So I'm going to do that. Yes, it's a good, good thing. Good Perfect. Question. Thanks. And the second one is from Helen Whale, just asking if lists are like LinkedIn groups. Hmm. I'm going to say no, Helen, because um, uh, LinkedIn groups um, they send you a notification when new posts are made, um, and the posts stick around forever, so you can pop into the groups, you know, maybe once a week, once every two weeks, and it's they're still easy to find um, those posts. Whereas with a tweet, once it's sent, um, it's kind of there once and and, and gone. Um, not it's not gone forever, but it'll be replaced by other tweets potentially. So there's no guarantee that you see it or people will see it. Um, so I say no, it's not like a LinkedIn group. We didn't go over this, did we? Uh, so these are some common images you'll see in apps and and websites and such. So um, I guess people used to write using a feather. So this kind of feather image means compose your tweet. So start typing up your tweet. These two arrows mean retweet. Um, so it's to send your retweet. Magnifying glass is your search function where you might want to type in hashtags. And the star is the favorite if you want to save a tweet later or tell someone that you liked his or her tweet. Uh, now what happens if you make a mistake? It's probably not a big deal. You can go back and delete tweets. Um, you can't edit them after you've sent them. But you know what? It's, it's a nice way to show some transparency if you send out a second tweet that corrects your previous mistake. So um, you to say, whoops, that was the wrong link. Here's the right one. Or whoops, I made a typo. Um, so it's an example. Um, a month ago, Fraser Health tweeted Chuck's journey to becoming care champions in healthcare. I had to retweet it to all the followers of the Patient Safety and Quality Council. I wrote, keep up the great work, Burnaby um, Hospital. I misspelled hospital. So instead of deleting that tweet, I just had um, some fun with it. It's like another uh, chance to show your personality off a little bit. Um, I typed LP, which is another kind of Twitter um, jar. It just means last retweet. It means refer to the tweet I just sent. Um, and another one of those things where um, you kind of have to pick up on it by using Twitter a little bit. Again, I said it's very experiential based, and this is, is an example. There's almost no way around it. But hey, refer to my last tweet, uh, and we'll try to produce great work by avoiding typos. And I use hospital as a hashtag there just to point out what I was referring to and have a little fun with it. So it's okay to um, you know, acknowledge that you made a mistake. Um, but you can go back and delete them if you really want, want to. Some things to keep in mind. Uh, uh, sending out uh, relevant and interesting content. So what do you like seeing on Twitter? Um, that's, those are good starting points for what to tweet yourself. And, and, and maybe um, the people in your network will like it, follow you. Be engaging, ask questions, respond to people. Um, people know thanks for sending out this resource. Um, 
favorite tweets, you know, just be out there and let people know you're out there and say, be positive and thank them for doing stuff. And whenever you tweet about something, try and include the handle of who you're tweeting about. So um, if you saw a, a, um, a nice blog post from the patient safety and, and, and learning system, would make sure that I include their Twitter handles so that um, they know I've tweeted about it. And it's just a nice thing to do. Uh, to let them know. And try and keep your tweet under 120 characters. Um, that is so that when um, when your tweet is retweeted and it includes a little RT space and then the handle and then like a semicolon and another space, well, all those take up characters, right? And you don't want people to have to do a lot of work to make um, the new retweet fit under 140 characters. So if you keep your original tweet around 120 characters, fewer if possible, um, that makes sure probably that they can retweet it no problem. They won't have to find a word to delete or letters to remove or anything. You're just making life easier for them. Uh, be nice. Uh, hat tips. Mention those who are involved in events articles. Um, part of kind of building your community and making connections with people. Um, and I always like giving the hat tips or, or just typing um, found this by so-and-so, just to um, um, not take credit for the great tweet that they just sent. And I, a lot of people ask, how often should I tweet or when should I tweet? Um, I say, do what you want um, and use it as kind of an experiment. So you're getting a lot of retweets and likes um, at night, then you know that uh, maybe people are checking out their Twitter feeds when they're chilling out after dinner or on their commutes home. Maybe it's first thing in the morning. Um, finding that um, your lots of tweets at one time, and it and they're getting fewer um, extra retweets, and maybe you should space them out a little bit. A lot of the apps and and their websites. I like using Hootsuite, by the way. I typed it into the chat box. Um, they actually use schedule tweets. So you can pop in right when you um, start your day at 9 a.m. and you're having coffee and, and kind of schedule your tweets for throughout the day. So you can see one at 10 and 11 and 12, but you don't actually have to log in and actually tweet it. You can just schedule it first thing in the morning. Share links. Um, uh, I saw a stat the other day that said 60 to 80 percent of all retweeted tweets have a link in them. So that's something to keep in mind. So include links when you can, uh, but try and keep them short. A lot of websites and apps um, will help you shorten your links. So they'll turn a big, long um, URL from the address bar into a short one. But you can also try typing O-W-L-Y into your browser. Another one is bit, which I didn't include, but I'll type in the chat box. And they just let you paste a really long URL in and then click a button and, and buy that you're a human, and then they'll spit a very short one. So you'll end up with like O-W-L-Y slash A-B-D-E. So it's a way to take up fewer characters in your tweet. Um, try and keep legible, avoid um, like the text shorthand, like great to you, just looking a little bit more professional. Um, about keeping tweets pretty, so try not to use too many acronyms or um, funky words and stuff. Um, uh, usually the way to get what you're saying across without resorting to too much shorthand. And in pictures, pictures are the most engaging um, content that you can use on Twitter. And I recommend going to twitter.com when you want to include a picture because that will make sure that it, it um, is interpreted in a way that um, is known when you when people log into their um, Twitter account. So um, when you when you check your Twitter feed of all the people you follow, and there's pictures embedded, and you can see that without having to click anything, well, the better that happens is to use Twitter.com. Uh, and asks, I find that many tweets share links and info. Is it acceptable to send a request for unique research or information? Um, so I mean, to the people that send these tweets, you want to ask them for um, more unique info and resources. Um, I think it's acceptable. They might not have it for you, Allison. Um, but maybe you can um, ask them for uh, um, um, 
websites or publications or journals where they where you might be able to find more of similar info that hasn't been um, tweeted so much. And Camille, has used Twitter column versus the app on your phone. Um, the wrong with using the app on your phone. Twitter.com is um, probably the best to enclose pictures right now. I think Twitter is always working on improving its app. Um, but the focus is really on Twitter.com, so that's always the number one way to um, send tweets using Twitter. Um, so I would, whenever I send a picture um, from um, an account, even though I use Hootsuite, like I mentioned before, I'll log into Twitter.com and upload the picture that way because I know it will be displayed in people's Twitter feeds as a picture that they don't need to click. Keep in mind that uh, including a picture um, also requires um, uh, 13 to 14 characters, so it's going to take up some space from your tweet itself. As I meant, sending out a general tweet with a more research-focused question. Um, I think, okay, totally. And it goes. Um, you might find that people, that no one will respond, or uh, maybe lots of people will respond, and you can, you'll find that that's a, a nice way to engage people um, you know, on a weekly basis. Um, asking questions is a great way to to start your network, your community on Twitter, and um, you can always ask somebody, send a reply, and say like, "Hey, um, a bit more about this." Um, okay. So you can Yep. I have addressed this. I think pictures are definitely okay, but Joanna was wondering if most people tweet photos, or is it generally more content? I would say it's it's generally more content. Um, I'm not sure the exact percentage of tweets that include a picture, but um, uh, most tweets do not include pictures, but they are a great way to make tweets a bit more engaging and stuff. So don't worry about including a picture with every single one of your tweets. Um, and there's no perfect show, but every now and then try and include one and, and, and liven things up that way. Um, so remember these slides where I went through kind of eight ways um, to use uh, eight reasons to use Twitter. I'll take you through some examples now. Uh, so for building and strengthening our community, um, I'm not sure if you know, but the council hosts a monthly Twitter conversation on Twitter. We call it Quality Chat, the name hashtag. So if you search for Quality Chat, you'll see tweets that are being sent um, uh, related to our, our monthly Twitter conversation. Each one has a guest host and a topic related to improving the quality of care and patient safety. It always takes place on the last Wednesday of every month at 9 a.m. So our kind of our regulars in the chat know to show up on the last Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Our next one is going to be May 27. Ordinarily, we would do it in April, but I'm not here to do it. So um, our next one will take place on the 27th. And if you go to our website and search for Quality Chat, you can see a transcript for each of our past chats. We even have statistics. And, and summaries of the kind of the top tweets that are sent every month. So check that out. A uh, way to increase awareness of issues. So this was a couple of years ago when our BC Sepsis Network was just getting started, um, and we were hosting uh, kind of the first visioning day, the planning day for the network. So uh, Christina Kraus is the executive director here at the council, and her Twitter handle, if you want to follow her, is CK4Q. That's nice and short. Um, she's excited for the first BC Sepsis Network meeting, seven hospitals are working to improve sepsis care. Um, well, somebody following the sepsis hashtag saw that, so Rose in Scotland said, hey, we're planning it here too. Uh, we should compare notes and results. And then the sepsis network said, yeah, let's do that. And me, council, I said, global learning, everyone's excited, there's lots of exclamation marks of conversation. Christina says, sounds good. Um, let's set up a call. So let's get offline and flush things out a little bit. So we're not to 140 characters every sentence. And then Jason Lee, you might remember him from the quality forum. Uh, this is his personality in a nutshell. He says, a match made in improvement heaven. So Chris and Rose, um, they kind of started um, uh, planning some activities for World Sepsis Day. And one of the activities that they collaborated on was a global Twitter chat. So just like the quality chat, it was a conversation that moved around the globe uh, with the time zones uh, for 20 hours. And it was just a 24-hour 
spurred the conversation about vote, um, sepsis. So here's what happened. You can hashtag WSD12, and 300 people participated. And impressions means the number of people who had the potential to see tweets sent by these 300 people. So three people and uh, over 550,000 uh, people potentially saw one of the tweets with the word sepsis day hashtag. It kept building and growing over the next year. And we can look at how it did the next year, the 24-hour Twitter chat. Check it out. So this year they used WSD 13, but now they're almost 1,300 participants. And they had almost 11 million impressions. So it's the sepsis community, and they chat with the um, hashtag uh, pound sepsis. And it's a pretty vibrant community on Twitter now. And if you're interested in sepsis care, I encourage you to check it out. Many us, I got to search for, say, quality chat, but how do I add it so I'm following it? Well, um, if you um, log to Hootsuite or Twitter, you can usually save a list that's um, based on the quality chat hashtag. You don't do anything, though. You can always just show up at 9 a.m. Uh, on the last Wednesday of the month and search for the hashtag, and you'll see the tweets automatically flow down on your Twitter feed, and you join in. Um, so I'm going to post a couple links right now in the chat box. Check TweetChat and Twubs. They kind of take all the um, tweets that are being sent with hashtag and display them in like a chat room display. So it makes it a lot more digestible and easier to follow. Um, as is there a way to get tweet audience analysis on Twitter? I like to get an estimate of the impressions or tweets to make. If you log into Twitter.com, um, it can give you some basic analytics that you're looking for. Uh, Hootsuite has some too. Uh, you have to go to a variety of sources for them, but Twitter.com should be a good place to start. Um, these stats I'm getting from a website called Simpler, and Simpler kind of organizes healthcare hashtags, so you can see these are the type of stats you get where who's using the tweet and how many people, how many tweets are sent and stuff like that. Um, so you mentioned too, we promote um, Twitter at the Quality Forum very much. Um, it's just a great way for people to connect when they're at the same learning event and share what's resonating with them. And you know what, at the Quality Forum we always have like seven breakout sessions at a time and obviously um, a person can only attend one at a time, but when people are tweeting about what they're learning in their sessions, it's a great way to find out what's happening elsewhere, and a great way to connect with people who aren't at the aren't able to attend the event as well. So you can pull a much bigger audience to what's happening at events like the Quality Forum, but event really too, and it's a way to uh, just keep the conversation going. Uh, you can share links to presentation files really really easily. Like, hey, I'm learning about great stuff in this session. Here's the file. Um, and you keep following um, a next hashtag after the actual event um, to keep touch with what's happening, news, um, all the resources it's publishing in the weeks and months to come, uh, when the next year's event is um, now, stuff like that. So it's great to use for events. Um, this was a couple of years ago. It was the first. It's been. Uh, it's ha happened since then. But uh, Houston Hospital in the states um, live tweeted a brain surgery. So obviously, they got all the permissions and a lot of preparations beforehand, um, but they um, live tweeted throughout this patient's entire brain surgery. So um, that was interesting. They were taking pictures and posting videos. It kind of uh, broke down the wall so people could learn about um, these surgeries and what takes place and maybe reduce some fear or misinformation around them. It was really interesting. Oh, I, I keep this slide to torture myself. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but it, um, uh, you know, I, let's say the big hamburger here is a, a article that's thousands of words, and the middle hamburger here is the abstract, which is a couple hundred words, and makes it, it summarizes the article a little bit and and, and condenses it so that you kind of know in a in one page what it's about. Well, Twitter is like the abstract of abstracts. You only get 140 characters, so um, it's a way to find out about, about articles and resources and meet articles and stuff really succinctly. Um, people are forced to get to the point and tell you exactly what the article's about. Um, so it's a great way to um, really condense information and follow a journal um, um, online on Twitter. Um, 
you, uh, it, it makes them um, tweet a clue what the article is about so you're not wasting your time or your clicks and ending up somewhere where it's not really ending up that relevant for you. Um, an example of change day tweeting uh, about a recent pledge. Um, they included a, a nice uh, engaging photo, so if maybe you're um, you increase the likelihood that you'll check out Mark's pledge. And um, our Surgical Quality Action Network um, responding to a study that questioned the effectiveness of the surgical safety checklist. So they were able to um, uh, write their own kind of response to the article and then um, tweet about their response to that issue. What was interesting, this are, um, there's a character on the show Breaking Bad who has surreal Cerebral palsy, um, the actor actually does in real life, but the mentions of cerebral palsy go up whenever an episode of Break Bad airs. So there's a conversation taking place, um, even now that the show is over. And it's interesting because a recent study at UBC found that 25% um, of the tweets about spinal cord injury and 15% of tweets about Parkinson's disease were from healthcare professionals. And a majority of those tweets were about research findings. And most shared content were links to research reports. There are opportunities maybe to connect with the public, to connect with other um, health professionals that share an interest. Um, when you, um, these conversations are already taking place, and it's a great way to phone <coughs> and and join these conversations. Um, can I find people to follow? That's a question I'm asked all the time. Well, there are hashtags. Um, it's a great uh, uh, find these people. You can hop on Twitter right now and search for um, uh, hat the Quality Cafe hashtag and find people who are in this session right now. So obviously you have something in common with them. You can go look at um, who follow the people you follow. Um, so who finds Hell Evan interesting, for example, uh, and and you, so you might have something in common with them. So that's a good way to discover people. Um, earlier, who else has been added to the lists that you're a member of? So you have something in common with those people for some reason. And who follows you? It's always nice to follow people who uh, follow you. It's kind of another my etiquette thing. So um, check out and following you and give them a follow back. To let your personality shine, I know I've mentioned this a few times. This tweet happened like five minutes before our webinar started. Um, Impact BC. I don't know if anybody from Impact is on the call today, but um, Impact BC is doing a great job supporting Change to APC, and I know we really appreciated it. Impact started a web page on its site to um, highlight um, its employees' tweets or pledges, sorry, and then they tweeted about it. And I said, "Can we give you a hug? Because we really appreciate um, support and what you're doing. It was awesome." So that was kind of a fun little tweet to send. This is this tweet. Um, got some faith back in the day. Um, Med in Matters is the health reporter at the Vancouver Sun, and Pamela Fairman, and she tweeted that simulated poop made of mashed lentils um, are helping people uh, in their health research. And I just said that smells like a good story, and people like that. It's a way to have some fun and be engaging and maybe make people smile, laugh a bit. Laugh a, bit. Um, a few final notes. Uh, that, you know, your tweets are public, so um, don't Tweet anything that you would say in a meeting, or um, you know, I like to say um, nothing is too funny or too clever that you can't um, leave an hour and come back and and ask yourself, is it still a good idea to send this tweet? Um, I mentioned before, uh, considering separate professional and personal accounts, um, you'd be tweeting about content that may not align with your organization's messaging or objectives or vision, and um, many organizations now have policies and guidelines that can help you um, know what content to tweet, what not to tweet, um, so on. So um, if you don't know if your organization has one, um, check it out, ask somebody, maybe your communications team will have one ready for you. Some quick uh, I think I'd have covered this before, but which tweet? Well, what do you like seeing? That's a good place to start. What interests you? Um, and then, at kind of get more comfortable on Twitter, you can uh, expand on what you're tweeting about. Uh, where I mentioned photos, use twitter.com. Those are really engaging. And um, if you type this address into your 
um, internet address bar, it's a way to discover hashtags that are healthcare related that people are using. And then some quick myth busting. Uh, you know, talk about Twitter. People say, well, no one cares what I had for lunch. Um, yeah, that's right. So just don't tweet about it. And a lot of people aren't tweeting about their lunch. So don't worry about your Twitter timeline being full of um, Kevin's salad of the day because um, I'm not going to tweet about that. Uh, no one cares about what I have to say. Well, um, um, you know, at being engaging, you can make them care. So um, send interesting um, content out and they'll care about what you have to say. And don't be feel like you have to start tweeting right away. Um, you can just sit back and observe people and just follow people. There's nothing wrong with that. There's even a term for you called lurkers. Um, it's all right um, to just sit back and use Twitter more as a resource and a, kind of an engagement tool. It's just for young people. People of all ages use it. Um, there's time commitment involved, but um, you can adjust how much time you spend on Twitter, um, popping in the morning or just at night. Um, it just may be important for you to organize yourself with lists and such. Um, maybe schedule your tweets, like I mentioned. And there's too info out there, or there isn't enough info out there. Well, if you're finding that you're overwhelmed by the number of tweets that are showing up in your timeline, you can try creating lists, or you can go through all the people you follow and unfollow the people who you no longer think are um, sending out valuable info. And isn't enough info out there? Well. Um, find people who you value and who seem interesting and you can always unfollow them if it turns out you're wrong but trust me there's lots of content out there for you I'm sure um, we almost hit the hit the post hit the nail right on the head here it's 1259 um, if anybody has any quick questions um, I can answer them but otherwise you can be way please fill out the evaluation on your way out I hope to see you on the out there in the Twitterverse. Don't forget to use your Quality Cafe hashtag and connect each other and follow each other and and have fun exploring Twitter and using it to connect with people and and promote campaigns like Change ABC. Okay, say so thank you so much, Kevin, for joining us and for all of our Change Day ambassadors that were here, as well as any Quality Cafe regulars. Good to have everyone call today. Um, feel free to contact Kevin by Twitter or email. Maybe you can throw your email to Kevin. And i um, happy to answer any other questions after the webinar. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thanks, everyone. See you in the Twitterverse.